Well, if you're able to stand, let's, let's stand and just praise the Lord for a few moments. I believe that God's going to meet every need of every heart here today. And I just believe no one's going to be left behind. I believe that every hungry heart is going to be filled to overflowing. I believe that with all my heart. Father, we just lift our voices. We lift our hearts to you tonight, today. Father, I thank you. I thank you that this is the Lord's day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the pastors yes. of this church. We just thank you, Lord, for the blessings of God in, in their family, in the Kraft family, Lord. We thank you that God is at work in Granbury. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus is Lord over Granbury. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Holy Spirit, we invite your presence today. You're already here. You're already here, but we invite your manifested presence. Just make yourself real today, Lord. We thank you for your powerful presence. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise be unto God. Well, I'll let you be seated. Praise be unto God. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's such an honor to be here today, and there's some proclamations that I want to make. I, I don't know that I'll kind of preach, teach, exhort, <laughs> but as I look around the room, I see people that we've known, some of you, for many, many years, and I thank you for coming today. Uh, it's a blessing to my heart, and I want to be a blessing to your heart. You know, church is more than just a meeting place. Amen. I was talking to a, a nurse recently, and she said, well, when I go to, every time I go to church, I, I get my feelings hurt. And I said, how does that happen? She said, I don't know. It just works out that way. <laughs> and I said, let me give you a little tip. You in Psalm 73, it said, until I went unto the house of the Lord, yeah. then understood I. Now, church is not the only place where you meet God, but every time I go to church, I don't just go to church to see what color the pews are or who's there, who's not there, who likes me, who does like me. I go to meet God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We've come to meet the Lord today, and people can disappoint you. Sometimes maybe a minister can disappoint you. That certainly can happen and does happen, but Jesus will never let you down. Never let you Hallelujah. He will never, never. Yes. I love that chorus you were singing a while ago. My granddaughter loves to sing that. He'll never, what is it? Never, never let you down. Never let you down. All right. That's what I thought it was. I, <laughs> but I've enjoyed uh, that. And You know, I was just thinking, we started Calvary in 1964. So you can do the gr math on that. And then we pastored really a little over 55 years, almost 56, but then our health, we really had some health problems. After divine health during all those years, I had open heart surgery, and, uh, you know, I've got about 300,000 miles on my frame. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, I've got uh, some, some uh, new shoulders and new knees and I'm kind of like a hardware store, you know. <laughs> you jerk those suitcases off those uh, airline lines all over the world, and, you know, it's like a battleground down there sometimes. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I've been so thankful lately. If you'll just stay thankful. Yes. My God, we have so much to be thankful for. I mean, especially in the way the world, we know it's all going to wind up and wind down in Bible prophecies and the progress right now. Mm -hmm. But I thank God we live in this greater metroplex. I believe you consider yourself metroplex, don't you? If, if not, you're right on the fringes of it. <laughs> no, we, but we live. Just think, we don't have to worry about someone coming to the door today. And well, it has happened in some places. And I understand there's a 
precious man of God up in Canada, among many others, that's been in jail now just for having church. Who would have ever, this is not the world I grew up in, my Lord God, not the world I grew up in. But you know what? We're so blessed to be in this area. A place to live, a place to sleep, food to eat, friends that love you for the right reasons. I want to say that again, friends that love you for the right reasons. And we've come and I've, I've experienced the Lord this morning. I've already been, I've already received a touch in my heart. I came to church to meet not only the crafts and you, but I came to, most of all, I came to meet Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. So I just, I just thank God for that. And I give you the glory, give God the glory, the honor and praise. We started in 1964 with Isaiah 4110. And that's been my life verse as a pastor and become my life verse personally. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Isn't it wonderful that God gives us strength? Yes, Lord. My, my. Last two and a half years of my life, is, it's been uh, some physical battles. We came out of the hospital and then had some wounds that <laughs> picked up one in the hospital and uh, some other things I didn't know existed. In all the years of pastoring, I don't know that I ever had a serious encounter with wounds, though they were there, been there. But I, I've had my own battle. But thank God we, we've got victory there now. Hallelujah. And God has given us a series of victories. Hallelujah. And this morning I was up. Uh, I, my alarm went off. My alarm in, is inwardly. <laughs> but I woke up at 5 this morning and the Spirit of the Lord began to talk to me. He said, tell the people today that this service is going to be a time of new beginnings. Hallelujah. No matter what your past has been, yes. that's what I love about the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank God I serve a Lord who will forgive every sin. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I serve a Lord who will never let you down. Amen. I serve a God, oh, hallelujah, who does not forget. Yes. And I've discovered you, even since uh, not being in the pastor, it's amazing how quick some people forget. It really, I, I had... I had a suspicion, but I've never really experienced that. It's amazing people that don't forget and those that do forget. But you know, there's such a blessing in remembering to be thankful. Yes. Yes. Amen. Israel's cardinal sin was they forgot to be thankful. Mm. Yes. They cried out, God deliver us, and God delivers them, and then they fuss about that. And then they fuss about the water, and they fuss about the food. They fuss about this and they fuss about that. But oh, our God is an awesome God. Yes. Today is my day of new beginnings. How about you? Yes. Yes. Your enthusiasm just overwhelms me now. <laughs> Today is my day of new beginning. How about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be unto the Lord. You know, Faith in God, understanding the principles of faith in God changed my life and ministry. After preaching for, for several years as just a young guy, just starting out an associate and so on, I worked as an associate for eight years and people told me, they said, you'll never go anywhere from here. I had friends that came by and said, you know, we're in a big tent now ministering we're doing missionary work, we're doing this, and here I am cleaning four Johns every day. <laughs> First, second, third, and fourth John. We had four, four Johns. <laughs> You'll get that about two o'clock in the morning. And they were there every day. <laughs> Getting scuff marks off of tile f floors. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Every time you, you see a, a, hear a screech, you, you, you cringe because you know you're going to have to clean that off when the service is over. And then preaching, too. Because preaching, a lot of people say, well, oh, I wish I could preach. That'd be glamorous. I'd like to travel. That's glamorous. Let me tell you, 
you got to be tough. you got to have a tough hide but a tender heart yes. to be in the ministry yes, sir. and to stay in the ministry yes, and not be overwhelmed by the problems of life. <laughs> but you know, Brother Dan, I want to just say this right off for Dan and Ashley, pastors Dan and Ashley. These are some of the finest people I have ever met in the ministry. And any church will go through a time when you have to go through some people that aren't happy and some are happy and sometimes some aren't. But you know, we, we hit a very difficult time and I watched this pastor like a trooper. I watched them like a trooper. They didn't miss one step, didn't stop one tithe check, sat right I think the second seat from the front, if not on the front, and just refused to let the buzzards get them down. And God has rewarded them. I said, God has rewarded them. Hallelujah. God has rewarded them. Amen. Brother Dan, if, if you had any doubt about it here, let me... Let me. <laughs> That's yours. That's mine. I'll keep it. I'll hang on to it. Don't even think about it. <laughs> All right, I won't. <laughs> I've seen somebody who said, God called me here for life, you know, and one year later you can't find them, you know. <laughs> and I know there are people here from other uh, congregations today, and I bless you in the name of the Lord. We're not just speaking blessing over this congregation, but Wherever you come from, go back and be a great blessing and just lift up the name of Jesus. You know, a life changer for me was when I was serving in a place where people said, you'll never go anywhere from here. It wasn't a, a huge church, but it was, it was a good church. And uh, I gave it my best. And we had evaporative coolers on the roof back then. Back then, back in the day, that dates it a little bit. I remember one day I was in a black suit on top of the church kicking the devil out of those evaporative coolers to make them run. <laughs> and I thought, is this the ministry? <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, it was there that I met Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan. God brought him to that church for four weeks, two services a day. And really there was a good half of that church that did not really receive, they did not really receive what I call the true faith message. The just shall live by faith. Faith and grace. But those that did, and I remember, we, it, God, they took us into their little travel trailer. He's probably passed away to be with the Lord with 300 books now for, that are available. But he only had one, he was working on his second book at that time, a little 18-foot or 19-foot travel trailer with an Oldsmobile with slick tires. And if you read one of his books or heard one of his old tapes, he'd go down the highway and those tires would say, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? <laughs> Four may pop tires, may pop at any time, you know. <laughs> but you know, God sent him there. And you know, if you'll just bloom where you planted, yes. bloom where you planted, Amen. bloom where you planted, Amen. rejoice where you're planted, Amen. shout where you're planted, Amen. love God where you're planted, Amen. give God your tithe where you're planted, Amen. give offerings at every opportunity. If you'll just honor the Lord, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Word of God said in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the just shall live by his faith. Yeah. You know, you, uh, I've come through a time when I was, and then I had two falls after that. Crazy. It was just an attack of Satan. And it, it affected mobility in, for temporarily in my body. 
I mean, there was a time I had to pray to put my shorts on. Get, to, you know, to, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's, it's a crazy feeling when you've been very active all your life. And you have to pray to ask, Holy Spirit, would you help me get in my clothes? Would you help me get them off so I can get my pajamas on, you know? <laughs> I know this is very practical, but let me tell you, it works. It works. You can trust in God no matter what your situation is. When you're young, you need to trust in God. David trusted. He learned to trust in God. He learned to have faith in God when he was a shepherd boy. He learned to be faithful over the sheep. He learned to sing praises to God. And when the big op bigger opportunities came, he was ready for it by the help of God. Habakkuk 2.4 said, The just shall live by his faith. Romans picks it up. Galatians picks it up. Hebrews picks it up. The just shall live by faith. You know, I, have to, I really have to, I, I keep a monitor on myself. I've learned the only way I'm going to make it in life is to live by faith. Amen. Lord, I'm, I'm getting in my car today. I trust you, Lord, to take care of me. I trust God with my finances. I trust God with my health. I trust God. With, you better pray over your food nowadays. <laughs> Amen. Pray about everything. Amen. Don't worry about anything, Philippians 1 translation said. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Yes, and trust in the Lord. And it's the Word of God that has kept me alive. The last two and a half years, I had two opportunities. I could be in eternity today. But I chose life. I chose a miracle working God. When the doctor said one thing, I said, no, all parts of my body stay in place. I'm talking about members of your body and wounds that were not healing and, and were getting worse instead of better. No, no, I choose life. Don't talk about your problem all the time. Talk about your miracle, your healing. Amen. Amen. Stop talking about Arthur. Arthritis is not going to help you. <laughs> Praise God. Today's your day of new beginning. Some of you, some of you really need that. I, I still read faces. God, say man. I don't need any joy. <laughs> yeah, you do. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Rejoice. <laughs> oh, glory to God. You know, we live in a day and uh, someone said, well, what, what emphasis is right? Which church is right? I, I get that question thrown at me and have and travel through the years. Which church is right? And I, I, I used to give a variety of answers, and finally one day God settled it. He said, you tell them Jesus is right. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is right. Yeah. He's right for you. He's right for every situation. Every church should be a Jesus church. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. We're faith and grace people. You know, grace, now I want you to write this down. It's one of those that I want to leave with you regardless of whatever else I might say because it's something that's so real in my heart. Grace, we are grace and faith people. Let me explain that. Grace, the grace of God provides. God has given unto us all things, Peter said, that pertain to life and godliness. It's already yours. But where is it? You, you, let me talk to you about faith. But faith, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Grace provides, but faith obtains. Yeah. Good. You need to write that down. You're going to need it on Monday morning. Yeah. You might need it before Sunday's over. Grace has already provided everything we need. The full gospel covers the full spectrum of your life, Amen. your mind, your body. 
in Joshua 1.8, it teaches us how to think. In, in Philippians 4.8, it teaches us how to think. If you've got stinking thinking, you're going to have stinking things happening in your life. <laughs> Whatsoever things are. And some of you do, do, you'd do much better if you'd cut off CNN and their relatives. Go ahead, go ahead and preach that. Go ahead. There's no good news. My television stayed on a little too long one day, and I caught a little bit of news, and I thought, man, I feel terrible. And I thought, well, God said, what have you been watching? Yeah, come on. You know, God's bigger than Russia. Yes. God's bigger than the Ukraine. Yes. You say, what if it's Bible prophecy coming to pass? Well, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Praise God. Hallelujah. We win. Yes. I've read the back of the book. We win. Yes. We win. Yes. This world is not my permanent home. Amen. My precious wife, Joy, went to be with the Lord on April the 7th, and I got to sing her into heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was right by our bedside. I just began to sing a song that has blessed us years ago. I'm going to a city <laughs> where the roses never fade. <laughs> Here they bloom but for a season. Soon their beauty is decayed. But I am going to a city where the roses never fade. Amen. Hallelujah. I kept my wife's little Acura full of gas. I'd rather have had a miracle, but you know what? She's got a turbo chariot now. <laughs> and you know, 87 years, not all bad, you know. 87 years. We've been, we're married 67 years. Best wife I ever had. <laughs> I'm serious about that one. Thank God. A, a precious woman of God. Amen. Precious woman of God. But she is a faith woman. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sometimes I'd come home and I was just so wound up about something. She said, Bob, God is faithful. Yes. God has never failed us. Amen. Amen. And when we went over to Uganda and my life was threatened and they said, if you come back, your life will not be safe. I uh, for our television. By the way, we're still on television in Uganda. Lighthouse Television, yes. 24 hours a day in the capital city of, of, your, of uh, Kampala, Uganda. Praise God. 25 years singing, preaching, teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I just, I'm, like I said, I'm dangerous this morning. I, I'm dangerous. But God wants you to know that grace has already provided. You say, but, but you don't know all the needs I have. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Grace has already provided your needs to be met. Yes. Well, wh how do I get them? Faith yes. obtains. Grace provides, but faith obtains. Does that mean anything to anyone here this morning? Yes, sir. Did you get that? that? That's one of the greatest insights and revelations that I've had. Some people say, well, wh which is right? What truth is right? Uh, is it the gifts of the Spirit? Which gift is the most important? The one you need right now. <laughs> Salvation is important. Amen. Salvation is important. It was outreach that, that jettisoned us out of that little post office building. Uh, and send us downtown to purchase First Baptist Church. We just began to open our hearts to the hippie generation of that day and time. And God gave us miracle after miracle after miracle. Salvation's important. If you're sick, healing is important. And let me tell you something. It's, it's good to remember that, that it's, it's important while you feel good. Yeah. Don't wait until you feel bad to start thinking about healing. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. And if I could throw in one more, turn off CNN. <laughs> Amen. Turn off the lies. Turn off the false news. And turn on the good news. Yes. Yes. 
Jesus said, I have come that you might have life. Life with a capital L and life more abundantly. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, yeah. hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Praise be unto God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I think some are going to vote wiser this next time than they have in the past. So. <laughs> If $4 plus a gallon doesn't get your attention, you ain't very smart. <laughs> you real slow. You need to go back to Ned and the first grade reader. reader. <laughs> well, praise God. You know, I just rejoice today that we are faith, grace, believers, born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak in heaven's language, and the devil can't figure it out. The devil's never been able to decode the tongues that God has given. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He just bangs his head against the wall. He said, We've been trying to crack that code ever since the day of Pentecost. <laughs> 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 oh, eat your heart out, devil. I'm born again. My sins are forgiven. Filled with the Holy Ghost. I talk in a language that Satan can't decode. And I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm on my way to heaven. Praise God. I like what missionary evangelist Wayne Meyer said. He'll be 100 years old here pretty quickly down in Mexico. And he said, I'm, I'm homesick for heaven, but don't push me yet. <laughs> Still have a few things for the Lord I want to do. Praise God. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Well, uh, I meant to read, and I am going to read here from Isaiah chapter 55. You need a light right up there. For as the rain cometh, Isaiah 55 verse, oh, let's see. That would be verse 10. For as the rain cometh down from heaven. <laughs> as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Listen to me. Your Bible is so important. Yes. So give so shall my word be. I can read. I'm just, it's just a little dim right here. All right. All right. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of. Oh, that's so. Thank God I can see. <laughs> had, had a miracle right there. <laughs> oh, to get Tom Audrey to sing, I saw the light. I saw the light. <laughs> So shall, listen to me, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. And if you'll receive God's word today, not only will that seed grow, but you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. That'd be, oh, hallelujah. Instead of the thorn shall come up the, uh, the fir tree. And the Bible said, if we just praise God today, you're going home a different way. I said, you're going home a different way. I'm going home a different way today. I came happy, but I'm going home rejoicing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might as well get happy. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, a story came to me. In fact, my friend Andrew Womack, we've, God's given me such wonderful friends, such wonderful friends. I thank God, Brother Rodney, what a blessing he was in our church. And I've, we've worked with him, preached with him. And I'll, I'll be preaching here in a few days down in Tampa. And then with Brother Andrew, we've been on his board, I think, for 35 years, I believe it is. And Brother Kenneth Copeland, our mothers, used to pray together. And then Brother, Brother Barton, his mother, and my uh, wife used to pray together all the time. But here's a story that came forth. There were pyramids in Egypt, as you know. 
And they went into, periodically, they go into certain pyramids. Uh, by, I don't know how they do it or who says they can do it, but they do it. <laughs> and they found some seeds that were 4,000 years old. They, now track with me. They found seed that were sealed 4,000 years. They had been in that pyramid. They took those seeds and put those seeds in good soil and bountiful wheat began to grow. Please listen carefully. I'm talking to myself as well as you. The word works if you plant it. The word works if you receive it. You know, oh, yes, that was fast, that was slow, that was, you know, we have all kind of ways, that was long, that was short. But God's word is God's seed for you. And that seed that was 4,000 years old, when it was planted in good soil, Pastor, it brought forth a bountiful harvest. I've had Grand Berry on my mind for a long time, and it just seemed like it wasn't the right time. And I had a lot of things. Uh, I've talked to Brother Dan about that. We've talked about that in the past. And uh, you are an extension. You're an extension of a vision that God gave me. And I was not the one to do that. But God gave you. You don't have to. But God, God called you for that. So this pastor is here fulfilling. He's a fulfillment. And I kept saying, well, God, why do you put, it, put this in my heart and there's nothing I can do about it right now? And you say, what was there you couldn't do about it? It's none of your business. <laughs> well, let me put it this way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to belabor you about <laughs> why. <laughs> But, uh, you know, everyone's not perfect, and we had to deal with some things. And uh, so anyway, God, God help us on that. But what I'm saying to us this morning, God brought you to this place, whether this is your home church or you go back to your church, God brought you to this place to put some seed in your heart that the just shall live by faith and that God by grace, salvation is by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God, according to Ephesians 2.8. And God's telling you that he has provided. You say, but I'm old. God has old seed. But I'm young. God has young seed. God has a seed that will meet every need. God has a seed that will meet every need. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Young people need more than cell phones and, and uh, a lot of other things. I'm not against that, but I'm just saying God has so much more for us. Yes. So much more for us. All of us, in some way or another, we're living beneath our privileges. So I go to church. I pay my bills. I don't kick the dog. I uh, don't fuss at my wife too much, you know. I love my little pastor, and, you know, I'm doing the, be doing the best I know how to do and on my way to heaven. There's more to it than that. Yes. Amen. God wants every day to be re a day of rejoicing, a day of anticipation. I mean, every alarm bell in hell ought to go off when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> Here she comes again. He's awake. Oh, no, no, no. My, my, my. Every one of you are, I know this in the Spirit. Every one of you are here by divine calling today. I'm here by divine calling. We've talked about this and talked about it. This seemed to be the day we felt in the Spirit. And because it is the day, praise be unto God, this is your day of new beginnings. Amen. And grace has already provided Hallelujah, but your faith reaches out to obtain it. Yes. Your best is yet to come. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, your best is yet to come. Yes. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> well, praise God. Amen. Oh, come off again? Yeah. Let me give you a little more links here. I think Satan's having a nervous fit this morning. <laughs> praise well, God. Go. Praise God. Praise God. You know, my wife used to say it so often. She'd say, believe God's word above all else. Believe God's word above all else. Yeah. Now think about this. And I, I, I can't get to a fraction of what I had in my spirit this morning. But we'll, we'll, we'll match trails here for Think about this. Think about it. Abraham is our faith father. Before the law, from ever since, read Romans 4, it's an eye-opener. One day Abraham sipping sweet tea outside his tent, God Almighty comes by. It's amazing when we sense the presence of God, don't get busy doing something else. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. God has a way of coming to us at the craziest times and in the craziest places. What I mean is crazy to us, you understand, not to him. God came to Abraham and said, get thee out of thy country and of thy kindred. Go to a land that I'll call you to. I could turn to Genesis 4 and read it for you. I'll make of you a great nation. And those that bless you, I'll bless them. Yes. And those that curse you, I'll curse them. Now, I'm not going to make you tell me because I couldn't even answer it myself. How many Bibles do you have at your home? How many translations do you have? How much word do most of you have? Now, I mean... Sometimes some people need to go buy a Bible, but I mean, I'm talking about, I don't know how many Bibles I have upstairs, downstairs, translations, but God came to Abraham and said, Abraham, Pastor Dan, listen up. I've made a special trip to your tent and I'm going to promise you something. You get up and go to a land that only I can show you. And you leave, you leave and you go. And what's going to happen now? And those that, I'll show you what to do and I'll show you where to go. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm deeper than I can get out of this morning. I'm trying to find an exit here. Amen. And those that bless you, I will bless them. Yes. You went to Israel with us, what, how many times? Three. Three, Brother Charlie, how many times did you go to Israel with us, you and Lori? Thirteen. Thirteen times. I think I've been 18 times. Every time I go to Israel, I look at tiny Israel. Now hold your thumb up. Less than the thumbnail on your thumb is Israel. The rest of your whole hand and fingers is the Arab nations. And God loves them too. I'm not bashing Arabs. But little tiny Israel, in spite of every demon out of hell, has been kept by Almighty God. Amen. It looks like they could be annihilated overnight. But in 1948... God has kept them through those terrible times of, of the Nazis. Israel is still standing. Amen. Tiny Israel is still standing. <laughs> uh, first sermon I ever preached in that little post office building in 1964. On this rock I'll build my church. Yes, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you know that applies to every one of us that believe. You know, but you say, well, how did that happen? Abraham believed God. Yes. Say it with me. 
Abraham believed God. Let's say it like this. I believe God. It's the only way it works. He didn't have a tent full of Bibles. All he had was the spoken word of God. Every room in my house that I go into, there's a Bible to remind me that God said what he meant, and he meant what he said. All Abraham had was a word, but God's word is more powerful than any word that the evil one could ever come up with. God's word is eternal. It's proven. God, Jesus never fails. And going over to Romans, the fourth chapter, it gives us the secret. Abraham is every one of us, our faith father, Mm -hmm. the father of our faith. If you're a born-again believer, your faith father, Dr. Kenneth E. Hagin during his lifetime was my faith father. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that (laughs) we have something so awesome, God gave us the illustration, the word of Abraham, Mm -hmm. who said, I don't know, maybe it was kind of a sleepy day. You wonder, well, you know, boy, life's kind of boring. You know, I'm just out here outside this tent. And what's life all about? And God Almighty comes and says, believe me. Do what I tell you to do. (laughs) And I'll make of you a great nation. And I'll bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. I feel sorry for my enemies. I, I tell you, I've had a revelation. I, I pray, God, please have mercy on my enemies. Because the Word of God is pretty. If someone falsely comes against us, they're in trouble. I could write a book on people that thought they were going to put me out of the ministry. They hadn't been around a long, they haven't been around a long time, and I can't find them. Amen. God took care of it. So what do I say to you today? I, I, I can't finish everything that's in my heart. But for 55 years, I saw God do the impossible. We purchased a post office building by faith in God. And if it had not been paid for in one year, we would have lost everything. Then God, we gave, we gave it everything we had, bought two city blocks. And then First Baptist Church called us they said, we're about to lose our church downtown that had a lot of splits and problems. They said, we believe you're the only church in Fort Worth that could handle our church. We had a 200-seat chapel. They had a 2,000-seat auditorium. And something in my heart said, yes! yes. God is able! Yes. God is able! Because in 1964, when we started our church, I walked in the back door. They didn't even have the, uh, they had individual chairs. And I looked at that new f- structure downtown. And back then, hardly anybody had a large church. And I looked up, and it looked like Tarrant County Convention Center. <laughs> and I said, oh, God, I've been raised in a good congregation, but a smaller congregation. And, and any church that God raises up is God's church. Amen. You got to start somewhere. I said, you got to start somewhere. And I remember standing at the back door of that auditorium saying, God, I'd give anything to see something even similar to this for the full gospel. And one day full... The church downtown calls us and says, we want you to buy our church on pennies on the dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, our God is an awesome God. Then one day Satan huffed and he puffed and he came with a tornado. And they said, it's over. But God had alerted us through the Holy Spirit to raise our insurance. And so we were fully insured. At the time, that tornado took us out and just moved us three miles down the road to 35W. God is an awesome God. 
a little preacher out at Associate Church. You'll never go anywhere from here. But I begin to meet men of faith. Listen, don't hang around with naysayers. Yes. Now, let me, let me say it nicer. Do what you have to do to get rid of them. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> but when you need some encouragement, don't go see Sister Bloom. <laughs> Sister Blues. <laughs> not, not the last name, Blue. I'm talking about people that sing the blues. Amen. You need more than a country western song. Amen. 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 Yeah, I hope you, uh, maybe I need an interpreter for this message this morning. <laughs> You've got a good pastor. He'll, he'll, straight, he'll iron out the wrinkles next Sunday. <laughs> but your words determine your life. Yes. Oh, I'm going to fail. You will. <laughs> I can't make it. No, you won't. I guess I'll get what everybody else is getting. Yeah, you probably will. Or you can speak the word. You can speak the word. And seed that might have been in a pyramid 4,000 years. You know, Pastor, man, that flipped me when I heard that. Oh, God. Seed going nowhere. But you mix good seed with good soil. You mix your faith with a good right on New Testament church and you can do what you couldn't do otherwise. That's why the Lord sent them out two by two. Man, you and Ashley can move any mountain with a little help. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Praise be unto God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe the word above all else. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Praise be unto God. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Could I give you one more illustration while I'm at it? I don't have time to go into, uh, I'm, I'm borderline right now. I'm overline. Get more for your money today. Paul was on board a ship. He said, we shouldn't sail, but who's going to listen to a believer? You know, the world thinks they have all the answers. Washington thinks they have all the answers. They don't. But Paul was caught in the midst of the storm. What do you do in the midst of the storm? You pray. You cry out to God. You hold on to your faith. You hold... You hold on to your hope. Yes. I flew into Vancouver to preach one time, and the man picked me up at the airport. I said, talk to me. What do you do for a living? He said, I'm a tree feller. I thought, boy, they sent a weird one to pick me up. I wonder which tree he lives in. <laughs> you know. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I cut down trees for a living. And I said, if I was doing your business, what's the first thing I need to learn? He said, don't cut your rope. <laughs> A lot of people are so busy cutting down the tree, they cut their safety rope. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I've lost two friends that way. Mm. They got too busy cutting down the tree. Good. And they cut their safety rope. I know there are times we can't go to church like we'd like to. I know that so very well. For the first time in my life, I face a number of Sundays that I was not able to go to church. And oh, my heart, I'm so thankful to be in the house of God. Oh, I'm so thankful to be in the house of God. Paul on board that ship, the storm was against them. The sailors were against him. Everything was against them. But Paul stood in the midst of the storm. And that's what God wants me to leave with you here today. In the midst of any storm that you may be a part of today. In the midst of any storm that you may be a part of today. I want to say something to you. I want to say what Paul said. I want to say what Paul said. Sirs, be of good cheer. Yes. 
there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I serve in Acts 27 is where you'll find that. And he said, the ship's going down. But if you listen to God and listen to me, we'll be saved. God said, don't jump ship. My wife's memorial service. We went through a two or three very trying times over those 55 years. I was amazed that people said, well, Pastor, I'm sorry, we, we, we shouldn't have left. <laughs> we miss God. You know, be that, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not there. But here's what Paul said. He said, this night there stood by me, and this day there stands by you a spokesman for God. And the story is in Acts 27. And God's word for you is, you're in the midst of a storm, but you're coming through the storm. Ships can go down, but it's people that count. Yes. And every life on this ship is going to be saved. Every life on this ship is going to be saved. And what Paul said, seal the deal. I believe God. Yes. I believe God. Say it with me again. I, I believe, believe God. God. I, I believe, believe God. God. It's the only way this message is going to work for you. It'll just be another preacher coming through telling you what you think he thought he ought to tell you. I'm here to give life yes. along with your pastor. Yes. I'm here to share life. I believe God. Yes. It shall be yes. even as God has told me, so shall my word be, Isaiah 55, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish what I purpose, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto I've sent it. Praise God. Now, you can go home the same old you or the same young you, or you can go home a different way today. Joseph went home a different, Joseph and Mary went home a different way. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going back to greater Fort Worth center area and I'm believing that God's best is mine. Yes. Yes. Miracles are on the way. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God supplies all of your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. Pastor, <laughs> You know, you don't cut a dog's tail off a little bit at a time. You cut it off. So I'm going to have to cut it off. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. And you know the best part about this message today? It's true. No fake news today. Hello. No fake news today. No fake news in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the Word. Thank you, Father, for the word. Now, I want you just to agree with me, and then I turn it back to Pastor. I, I've run over line a, few, a little bit here today. But I, I feel such a flow of the Spirit of God. Father, I'm believing God for every miracle that is in this room today. Lord, just let us take the cobwebs of our unbelief bad memories of the past, disappointments in life, things that have happened, and let's cast it at the foot of the cross. Yes. And Father, from this day forward, hallelujah, forgetting those things which are behind, pressing forward to the prize, the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus, I head for higher ground. Hallelujah. I'm going home in victory. Yes. Today is my day of new beginnings. Yes. And Father, I just bless this church and every church that's represented here today, but especially those that have given me the invitation. I bless the Ashleys, uh, Ashley and, and uh, Brother Dan. I bless the crafts today. Oh, Father, I say this is just the beginning. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Just the beginning. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, God's not broke. God's not deaf. God's not out of miracles. God's not mad at you. 
Blessings over Greater Granbury. Blessings in the name of Jesus. The will of God over Heights Church here in Granbury. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Brother Dan. <laughs> I'm out of here. All right. Let's give Pastor Bob Nichols a big Amen. hand. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Wow, what Amen. an honor. Pastor Bob, thank you so much for that word. And we just receive it as the Heights Church for all our campuses, for, for Cleburne and yes. Burleson and Hillsboro and here in Granbury. We just receive that for all of them. And we just declare. And I don't know, P Pastor Cody was saying the other day, he felt like the whole Heights Church was blessed through us. Not just Granbury, but all of the Heights Church. And I'll just say, hey, we come from good ground. We've got good seed. And I tell you, there's great seed that God has poured out and I love the fact that God's brought us all together regardless of the church or denomination you're with like Pastor Bob said go home if you're going to a different church we just pray bless that church you be a blessing there and serve any way you can if you're interested in serving here we have a meeting right here won't keep you long just for a few minutes in the lounge if you'd like to get plugged in and do what Pastor Bob Nichols has been preaching. I just pray a blessing over every person here. I'd like our prayer team to come up here and be at the front. If you need prayer, you can come forward and people will be here to pray with you. Otherwise, I'm just going to pray and we'll dismiss you. And we'll see you next week right here at 1045. It's going to be an awesome message. Lord, we just pray a blessing over every person. Let this word that has gone in our hearts as good ground produce good fruit, Father God. Help us not to lose it in the parking lot or lose it on the way to wherever we go eat. But God, to continue in this, and I just thank you, Lord, that we have received and grabbed a hold, not just been taught something, but that we've caught something this morning by the Holy Spirit. And we just got that new spirit that of don't quit on the inside of us for every person in our team and every member here. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week right here. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. We pray that you have been blessed by God's word. For more information, visit us online at heightslife.org.